It's time for Net at Night. Sarah Lane filling in for Amber MacArthur. And we've got a great show for you. Guy Kawasaki is here. He pulls no punches. He'll talk about AOL's acquisition of, of TechCrunch. He'll talk about what went wrong at Apple. A whole lot more coming up next on Net at Night. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Audio bandwidth for Net at Night is provided by Winamp. Subscribe to Net at Night and all your favorite podcasts with the ultimate media player. Download it for free at winamp.com. Video bandwidth for Net at Night is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Net at Night with Sarah Lane and Leo Laporte, episode 170, recorded September 28, 2010. Guy Kawasaki. Net at Night is brought to you by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to audible.com slash night. And by Squarespace.com, the fast and easy way to publish a high-quality website or blog. For a free trial and 10% off the lifetime of your new account, go to Squarespace.com and use the offer code NIGHT. It's time for Net at Night from Petaluma, California. I am Leo Laporte. And from the land where ducks and robots <laughs> live hand in hand, I'm Sarah Lane. Sarah Lane filling in for Amber, who is stuck in customs right now. Oh. Yeah, she's, she's, uh, she's going back to Canada from Denver and yeah. took longer than it, she wanted it to. So happy to fill in, of course. I'm no Amber, but I love doing the show every once in a while with you, Leo. I'm thrilled having you on. Are you kidding? We're having a great time here. Yeah, exactly. And uh, joining us, I mean, speaking of thrills, we've got one of our best all-time best guests ever coming back, making a reprise. Have you had uh, Guy Kawasaki on the show before? we That's why I said it. We have indeed. Guy, <laughs> Guy is actually, this is very uh, appropriate because he's right now at Tech Crunch Disrupt, which is the big conference going on in San Francisco. Uh, Mike Arrington, of course, a very big story last week. With his blogger walks into a bar and the, uh, you know, assertions that there was collusion going on among super angels. And again, top of the news, big news this week. Today, in fact, it breaks at TechCrunch 50. AOL Did buys. TechCrunch Disrupt. TechCrunch Disrupt. 50. That's right. That's the uh, old one. Does not exist anymore. Calicanis is going that's the old nutso one. about that whole thing. Yeah. You know. So here he is, um, Mike Arrington, making the big announcement. I'd like Sponsored to by Mailchimp. Tim, Tim Armstrong, the CEO of AOL, on stage. Tim just flew out last night. Well, this is confirming to, what everybody uh, come thought. Up and meet with us. The CEO of AOL is coming yeah, on the stage. How you doing? Mm, baby. This could be mm -hmm. some serious stuff here. Hey, hey. I wonder if they'll hug like when AOL and Time Warner merged. So, Tim, I, uh, there were these rumors flying yesterday. Um, <laughs> what, what, we, we I got to give it up to Arrington. He's about. very good live. Did He's very good on stage. Uh, he just well, asked, he I, said, did you uh, buy you really me or not? <laughs> and uh, I think they're a great company, but I don't have any comment at this point. You, won't you flew all the way out here not to comment on this at all? Uh, actually, I flew out here for a different reason, which is uh, I've been a big fan of TechCrunch. I've been to many of the events uh, over the years. Fan. Yeah. Are you a fan of TechCrunch? Love it. You should be. Um, big fan of your team, of Heathers. And uh, I flew out here because actually... Uh, well, I think we've, we've learned something here that this guy is a fan of Heather's, which was one of my favorite movies. Uh, <laughs> that's weird that he says he's, you know, just threw that in. Like, and, yeah, uh, just, I, I mean, if, if we're talking me, about uh, our youth. Partner. So the, the first thing they were talking about is not, is not, it was AOL buying somebody else. I know I was confused because I didn't. Let me, let me let me rewind. Yeah, AOL also just acquired Five Min, which is uh, it's almost like an aggregate of of user created uh, videos. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 Five Min, not Five Men. Tutorials. Yeah, Five Min, like Five Minutes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, Five Men, not Five Men. <laughs> five Men and a Heather. AOL acquired Five Men today. <laughs> okay, well, let's listen here. Uh, did you buy Brizzly or not? Brizzly, that was the rumor. I didn't know they were going to buy. Well, he said no. Uh, well, I, uh, I know the Brizzly guys really well. I used to work with a bunch of them, and uh, I 
think they're a great company, but I don't have any comment at this point. Oh, you maybe they're in the market to buy Brizzly. Why would you buy Brizzly? Twitter just redid their website. Brizzly, which is a web-based Twitter uh, client, is you know is kind of obsoleted by the new Twitter site, if you ask me. Yeah, I've never, yeah, I've never really... I, oh, I, you're Cyloning. I, I, Unplug and plug in again. Oh, oh shoot. Right. The show is... How feel about me now? I love you now, baby. Can you so, hear me now? Yeah. So here, here is the continuation of our, <laughs> our video. <laughs> Mike Arrington rubbing his eyes in pain. About an acquisition <laughs> at New York at Disrupt there. Um, you had gone off stage. We had just spoken. And we went into a, uh, into a back room, uh, sort of the speaker room. And, and you said, hey, so just how are things going in general? Are you, know, you enjoying yourself? And I said, I'm so tired. I'm like, I've moved to Seattle. All right, I'm tired of this. They bought, AOL bought TechCrunch, right? AOL bought TechCrunch, yeah. It's confirmed they're, they're in this video in about an hour in. I know. Yeah, it, it's going to go on and on. Um, I was hoping that the video started a little bit later uh, to make for... for we, we know how, we know that videos are supposed to be short and concise, right? You and, you and I never go on and <laughs> oh, on no, about never anything. never go on and on. Nobody so does you, that. So you have a connection at TechCrunch. Is this, is this public <laughs> knowledge? Can I mention this? Do not work at TechCrunch. No, but you know somebody who does. I, I believe. Know, I, I believe you're dating. I, I believe you're dating somebody who works there. Well, I, I, I want somebody who works at TechCrunch is my roommate. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, and your roommate does he say anything about this? D does he say anything about it? Yes, Has, he's thrilled. So this is all very exciting. For it, them. it is good news for them. Yes. Um, you know what's interesting? Uh, I wouldn't say and, it's course, good you know, news. If you if you get bought by AOL, don't you think they're just going to disappear? Well, I guess Engadget is owned by AOL. Yeah, Engadget's actually a really good example of a blog that I think um, a very few people would say was ruined by AOL. I mean, and, No, you can it, barely it, tell it's AOL, can you? Yeah, I mean, the editorial control is uh, is ha hasn't been touched, at least... You know, not not much. Um, I don't think anyone really expects at this point. I mean, y you can look at this a couple different ways. You can go, it's AOL, and you know, it's the end of an era, and uh, TechCrunch was such a, you know, they were a bunch of renegades, and and nothing will be the same. And and I mean, you have to assume that there there might be. Uh, a bit of a conflict with bashing of AOL, uh, you know, because that that has happened in the past, but. That's a good um, point. AOL now, I mean, does that mean TechCrunch will now no longer ever say anything bad about Engadget, but will always say something bad about Gizmodo? Does it mean what? It, I don't know. That's an interesting that's a good question. Do we know how much AOL paid for TechCrunch? Well, the rumor is anywhere between 25 and 40 million. And a lot of folks are going, boy, that seems low. But I mean, you you and I, it's it's important to, to know the terms of these kinds of deals because it's right. like 25 million to just walk away in cash with no incentive and having to hit certain numbers is There's a very a different deal than right. 75 million where in five years you've got to grow to this point. Right. And if you don't hit that number, then you're not getting the money. Well, there's also so, the issue of is it cash, is it stock? There's a lot more. Right. To yeah. be said about that, so we don't really know what the what the selling price was. Mike Arrington is he sole owner of TechCrunch, or are there other people uh, who own it? As far as I know, um, Mike, Mike is... started. Mike just started blogging. He's a lawyer by training. He started yeah. blogging He's about got a startups. Really interesting story. He was it's a VC. Kind of, it's like a it was like a hobby that he put together to get back into the scene after going away for a while, and it turned into this huge animal really i mean and it's a testament is, to to mike's really uh strong ability to drive traffic to get stories to get scoops um you know now he kind of he lived here TechCrunch was in his house for a long time recently yeah. moved out of his house to offices and he recently moved i understand up to the up to seattle or somewhere pacific northwest somewhere yeah i think that's where his parents live so oh maybe he's taking care of them so i you wonder know, if this is him <laughs> dialing down or if it's him cashing it's out a, it's or? a good question i mean again a lot of people are going oh well without Arrington, TechCrunch is just dead but it's like aol is the people behind aol know that I mean, there's no way that TechCrunch sold to aol for let's say even on the low end of 25 million just to, for mike to be like all right i'm out of here like they don't buy an entity just to have it fall apart i mean i'm sure that there's some agreement that everybody had to sign to stay there for a this is a huge money. story so before we get guy kawasaki on the line here sarah lane i got to talk about squarespace.com you do you 
your website, Sarah Lane, uh, is, uh, is on Squarespace, is it not? Yeah, and I couldn't be happier. I've been on Squarespace for a couple of years now. and um, You were an early really adopter. It's a seamless experience. I didn't hear about I, it until uh, after you started using it. Yeah, you know, um, I became familiar with Squarespace uh, through Revision 3. Um, it was, I was a pretty happy typepad user. Um, you know, I was, I was, uh, I, I don't know that, that I was happy with it, but it what I had been using since, oh, yeah, I we all kind of, that's exactly it. We all put up with our, our, our blogging platforms because yeah. we didn't know any better. And then along comes these guys. Anthony and Dane are just so cool. They, they created Squarespace. This, this should have been the Facebook movie is the Anthony and Dane story. They wrote this in college because they weren't happy with blogging platforms, and they found, I mean, this is the best place to have your website. They host it, and they have the best software, the best uh, templates. They're easy to drag and drop to, to modify your site, so you don't have to know anything. Of course, if you know CSS and JavaScript, there's no limit to what you can do. Uh, a great iPhone app for posting complete social integration into everything, including Twitter and, uh, you know, of course, Facebook and Flickr. But, I mean, a dozens and dozens of social sites. Uh, it imports your existing content from your existing blog platform, but it also exports, so you're never stuck. I could go on and on, but look, I want you to try it free for two weeks. Go to squarespace.com slash night. You don't even need a credit card. You just set up a site. You Just to get, just to get the flavor of it. You know, play with the templates, play with the design. Yeah. Just get just, the flavor. Just see if you like it. Get some square space on your tongue. The See first it, taste is roll free. Roll it around. You'll Slosh love it. it. This isn't going to hurt you. You could spit it out at the end, but I bet you won't. I bet you will sign up for Squarespace. And boy, is it affordable. Starts at $12 a month. And let me tell you, you if you use the coupon code NIGHT when you sign up, you're going to be saving 10% a month for the life of your site forever. Squarespace.com slash NIGHT. It's the secret behind exceptional websites. Guy Kawasaki is the secret behind the he's actually the guy who runs the internet. Let's <laughs> let's get him on the line right now. Actually it looks like Guy's in his in his office. Guy, good to see you. Welcome to uh, Net at Night. Hi Welcome Liv. Back. How are you? I'm great. So you left TC uh, Disrupt and you're at home now? Uh, I don't go to those industry things. You don't? <laughs> no, because, you know, I can only set, handle so many egos in a day. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I figure, hell, I can get a free pre anytime. I don't need to do that. <laughs> uh, guy, so, Guy, what do you think of this news that AOL bought, uh, bought uh, TechCrunch? I, you know, God bless Mike Arrington. He, you know, he definitely pulled it off. Now he can go to the store and buy his own cell phones. He doesn't have to accuse people <laughs> of getting paid off to do it. Do you think we're going to see a kinder, gentler Mike Arrington working for AOL? No, I don't think that's in his DNA. Um, yeah, you know, maybe when he's the ex AOL right. employee, right. he'll be a kinder, gentler one. But you know, Mike is Mike. He is what he is. Typically, so, these deals are structured that the, the founder stays on for a, a period of time. Isn't that right? Yeah, you know, like two, three days, yeah. <laughs> but I, but we, I, is TechCrunch anything without Mike? He's got, they've got great writers. They've got M.G. Siegler, who's fantastic, and a bunch yeah. of other th people. Yeah. Uh, well, well, but, you, you know, at some point, I think many people look at TechCrunch in order to get a daily synopsis of, you know, the 20 deals or things that matter. And every once in a while, he pops one like this angel thing. And I mean, this angel thing, you know, I, I, I listen, Mike Arrington f scooping a bad thing. I mean, that's like, you know, Idi, <laughs> Idi Amin is reporting on Akhmenadja. You know, I mean, right. it's like, yeah, wow. I mean, you know. <laughs> So, so wait, the, no, let's 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 set this up. Yeah. People have probably heard of it. They, they call it now Angel Gate. Mike Arrington yeah. posted last week. A blogger walks into a bar, talks about getting invited, uh, get, not getting invited to a yeah. uh, uh, a dinner at Bin Thirty Eight, a, re a restaurant wine bar in San Francisco. All the big super angels were there. These are angels yeah. who are so big that they're almost VCs in and of themselves. In some cases, they actually do have funds. Uh, he goes there saying, "Oh, I got to get the story." He goes there and is frosted by them. He says they're all my friends, but he leaves, 
yeah. then uh, asserts maybe there was collusion going on. That they, he says, I heard from several afterwards that they had uh, decided to keep valuations low. They decided to put Paul Graham and Y Combinator out of business. And then their f f emails are flying back and forth. Dave McClure of 500 Hats denying everything. Ron Conway oh. getting into the act. And it's just kind of gotten messy. But te here's the, my problem. Yeah. Now, a week later, TechCrunch has not backed it up in any way. Mike hasn't backed it up in any way. This story, he got a lot of attention for it, but he hasn't done anything to support it. It's like, well, if you're going to make those <laughs> assertions, we need to know more. Well, but, you know, a lot of it is... Consider, consider the source, right? So this is a guy who will receive what he thinks is stolen confidential Twitter documents. He doesn't verify that it's really Twitter documents. And then he publishes it as if it is for sure Twitter documents. And so, you know, so I don't know who to believe in this. You know, I believed all those guys. You know, maybe they all wanted an excuse to go have a drink. Right? Aren't they your buddies? Were you there at Ben 38? No, no, I don't, you know, I don't collude. Um, well, I, we don't know if they colluded. There's no, I mean. Uh, yeah, but so, you know, maybe they all wanted a, to, an excuse to have a drink. So they call themselves angels. So they go to this bar. And and I suppose, you know, it's kind of natural that one of the conversations would be, uh, let's just, you know, let's rag on Y Combinator for a while. And then let's rag on the increasing of small companies and let's rag on uh, venture capitalists so you know uh, but that's a typical conversation that happens 2,000 times a day right. in Silicon Valley right so it just happens that Mike wants to make a story about it so God bless him I mean you know I don't th this is not exactly deep throat and Richard Nixon <laughs> here. you know what I'm saying yeah I agree with you um it's funny because when I had that you you mentioned the pre and you know I, I think most people know it certainly was heavily viewed on YouTube that uh, we used to I watched do... it last night again. <laughs> <laughs> we used to... uh, it's funny. It's not uh, my proudest moment by any means, but it will live forever. You've got to be careful what you do on the Internet, kids. People, it uh, doesn't forget. Yeah. Uh, Mike was on a show. Uh, Steve Gilmore uh, for a while did uh, his show on uh, this network. Mike was yeah. on and uh, started needling me about uh, the review Palm Pre I had. And I was very clear. Yeah, I don't normally take review units. I have this for five days because of the timing. I had to take a review unit, but I, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. And he really kind of insinuated, oh, you're going to give it a positive review. Only right. people who give Palm positive reviews got one. And his proof was we didn't get a review unit. And finally, I just, he just kept, and this is Mike's way. And actually, it's why he sometimes gets people to say things mm -hmm. they oughtn't because he's good at needling. And finally, I said, screw you, Mike, and hung up on him. And oh, you said more than that. Yeah, I was bad. I <laughs> called him a troll, whatever. You know what's interesting? After that guy, I got so much email from some very big people in the industry, most of whom did not want to get named because people are terrified of TechCrunch yeah. and Mike, saying, yeah. right on, it's about time somebody said I something don't... like that. So you know, the, the reason why I watched it, and I watched it maybe, literally, maybe 15 or 20 times last night. <laughs> so, no, I'm not a, you know, I'm not stalking you, Leo. But <laughs> I'm writing a book called Enchantment. And this book explains how to enchant people. And I make the case that one of the ways to enchant people, believe it or not, is to swear every once in a while. And so I cite this as an example of, you know, generally you shouldn't swear, but once in a blue moon, you can swear if the situation is right, where the audience is behind you. You know, it's your show, Leo, right? So it's your show, the audience is behind you. And if it's in the face of something that's just head-smacking, jaw-dropping, arrogance, hypocrisy, stupidity, you know, then it's okay to swear. And in fact, not only is it okay to swear, it's good to swear because the audience you know, aligns with you. They think you're an earthy, kind of down-to-earth, no BS kind of guy. And your emails prove it. Yeah. So I, it was, I don't think you planned it. No. And but, I regretted it. And I apologized shortly uh, thereafter. But, yeah, but, you know, I heard you guys kissed and made up, which kind of takes a little bit of the... Well, the, you know, the last... <laughs> Mike and I have still always been a little bit at, at odds. And, and uh, you know, I saw him at, at, at a food camp. And he was like, he was afraid I was going to slug him. I don't know why. And yeah. he was like, like this, and I said, no, no, I don't have any animus. And then, you know, I, I talked, I, just as you did uh, recently, about the fact that Mike will run with a story even though there isn't much support for it because it's good for links. It's link bait. Right, right. And he sent me a note. One line said, do you take pleasure 
in knocking me down. <laughs> so obviously he's still not completely comfortable with me. <laughs> but I agree with you. If you don't swear, if you never swear, which I don't, I'm very careful about not swearing. When you do, it carries huge weight. Yeah, I mean, like the Carol Bartz thing, that was kind of huge, right? Yeah, although she's known for having a foul mouth, isn't she? Yeah, well, there's, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So tell me more about Enchantment. This is interesting. Um, you know, it's a book. It's coming out in March, and it explains how to enchant people. And um, Enchant what, like, to bewitch Enchant in no, what context? Uh, uh, to woo, to persuade, to influence. You know, I, I love this guy, uh, Robert Cialdini, is a professor in Arizona. He wrote the book Influence. Mm -hmm. So I love his work. And uh, there is a certain science to influencing and wooing and persuading people. And that's what this book is about. You know, my, the, the book that I'm trying to compete with uh, in my own humble way, is How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale, Dale Carnegie. Carnegie. The classic. Yeah, that book, Leo, that book was made in 1935. To this day, it sells. It's, it's number like 200 on Amazon. But it, is, years it later. is out of date. I mean, it's time to be updated for the internet era, so I'm glad you're writing that. Yeah, no, I'm glad you're writing that. And I, you know, I just downloaded it as a, as, as an, as a uh, uh, accidental entrepreneur myself. I downloaded The Art of the Start on my Kindle just the other yeah. day. It's a great book about what you need to know, the rules for startups. So I'm glad you think about this. You as you were an Apple evangelist. You were, and that was your job, wasn't it, to enchant? Yeah, that was my job. It was, uh, and, and I'll give you the, the, the key to enchantment. The key to enchantment is to create or align with something great. Because it's easy to enchant people with something great. It's very hard to enchant people with crap. Mm. And uh, mm. that's, you know, 80 or 90 percent of the battle. Interesting. So can I plug another website? <laughs> Why not? Go ahead, guy. <laughs> enchant me, baby. I'll, I'll send you a free pre. Um, <laughs> you know what's sad about the pre? The pre should be what the Android is. Yeah. I, you know? I loved the pre. I was very yeah. impressed with it. I didn't end up using it full time because for a number of reasons. It was mostly the hardware. <laughs> I, well, no, no. I was going to buy. I was prepared to buy one if it was the hardware was underpowered for the OS, which a lot of yeah. early smartphones were like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, you know, I write a blog for American Express and American Express uh, just uh, announced a website called Get Currency. And this is a website for young adults to figure out how to have a, a healthier personal finance oh that's a bad time what personal finance no that's a great the, time. that we don't but kids don't learn this do they well this is not kids kids this is you know well, young adults i mean my yeah, like my adults. daughter's 18 first year of college right she's probably got a credit card she and has an eight yeah, absolutely yeah and and these are the it's like the crucial 10 years where you can really let things get out of control because you start and you think oh this is great i can right. buy that couch and i don't so, need to have so the this, cash in my pocket so this website explains you know how to buy a car uh you know how to handle your credit cards they run you through some courses and some planning so it's a good site what's, for young what's adults what's the url uh, getcurrency.com and would you say it's for like first year high, uh, college kids like that uh, yeah, I think, you know, first-year college kids and recent grads. I mean, the, you know, the 20 people to 30. People entering, entering the real world. Yeah, uh, you know, people people who haven't sold to AOL recently. <laughs> would it also... Wait a minute, um, I got a call here. I got a call from Mike Arrington. Let me just see if... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's that phone doing here? <laughs> you guys are so weird. I'm so sorry, Sarah. You didn't mean to drag you into this... No, so, I just kind of have to I, I sit think, back um, and, and and have some popcorn and enjoy this. It's a little bromance between me and Guy. That's all yeah. it is. No, it, it, I'm entertained. Guy, would you say that um, Get Currency would also be good for folks who are uh, not recent college grads who, who just feel like they, they need to brush up on how to keep track of their finances better? Yeah, well, maybe, maybe it's the first time you really need to figure this out, huh? Maybe. Yeah can't just uh, close your eyes and throw a dart This anymore. is interesting. So th there are actually courses here. Yeah. Well, listen, would I come on your show and plug a piece of crap? Well, how, what is your, what is your, what is your, did you do some of the, what did you write some of this stuff? What is the deal with this? Oh, no, it, I happened to blog for American Express right. uh, in their open forum and they just told me about this website. So, oh, so you just, you just, out of the goodness of your heart. You're not a paid well, spokesman for this or something. Not well. I mean, I do blog for American Express. You're a so paid, right? And Wharton, so. Wharton is doing this, so that's a that's very prestigious. The Wharton yeah. School of Business. <laughs> uh, what are you What are you laughing at? 
Well, let's get back to some people we can pound on. Who else can we pound on? Who else on? do we hate? Who else do you hate, Guy Kyle? Who else? Not hate. Hate's a strong word. Yeah. Um, who else are you unhappy? Who else do you think is getting more attention? What about <laughs> Yahoo? Let's talk about <laughs> Yahoo. Do you think Yahoo is on the right track? Wow. You know, I think Yahoo, poor Yahoo, they really have to dig themselves out of a hole. They sure do. And you know, the, I think the challenge for Yahoo is no one can figure out what Yahoo is. Right. Even and, Yahoo. Even Carol yeah. Bartz. Now, I have a lot of respect for Carol. She seems to have done a good job trying to get Yahoo on track, but it seems like a tough thing to do. Yeah, I mean, somebody, you know, what... Now, you could... It, it's kind of... Um, it kind of is a half-empty, half half full thing like half empty you'd say well you know what is yahoo half full you'd say wow yahoo has a bunch of businesses many of which are very strong so you know they are a safer bet whereas That's with true. google They're i mean diverse. you know if 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 advertising goes down the tubes mm -hmm. wow you know google's really in trouble but a lot of things have to go wrong for yahoo um and you know i, I can relate to yahoo because when i was inside of apple from 87, you know, 88, 89, that time frame, um, also the early 2000s. It was a real bummer. You know, everybody thought Apple was going to die. Uh, things were horrible. That was the Gil, Am the Gil Emilio yeah. era. Oh. So clearly, you know, clearly App Apple companies can't, maybe Jerry Yang will come back. Uh, companies right. can make a comeback. If the that, founder, if, you, if the guy with the genius comes back. Well, or, or doesn't have to be that guy with the genius, but it has to be somebody with some vision that right. says, you know, from this day forth, this is what Yahoo is. And uh, so it can be done. And, and what I've learned in Silicon Valley is that th when you're inside a company, um, things are never as good or as bad as they seem. And you know, right now, probably Yahoo, people think it's really bad, but it's probably not as bad as they think. And meanwhile, there are companies where you think we're on top of the world, we own the world. And if you really knew what was happening, it's not as good as you think. Right. So, who's? Let's talk positively. Who's? Who do you think is knocking it out of the park these days? Well, you know, for sure, Apple, right? I mean, what? Yeah, but don't. But the, 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 this iPhone four thing, you think they handled that well? Which iPhone four? The thing? antenna gate. Um, you know, well, well... You it, would not have handled it the same way, Guy Kawasaki. Well, that's probably true, but I, I think from just an engineering and scientific standpoint, the iPhone 4 is better in reception and clarity and all that. And this concept that if you hold the phone the wrong way, you'll drop or call, I mean... You know, I, I think I, I think the iPhone 4 is much better than the, the previous one. So what's the problem? Um, and I don't know. You know, I, people think I'm an Apple fanboy, so I always back up Apple. They would be amazed at how many times I take shots at Apple. Uh, but you know, you, you got to admire them. I mean, Dave Weiner wrote a, a blog about how this is the beginning of the end of Apple. It shows their arrogance, you know, blah, blah, blah. People are going to return their iPhones by the hundreds and all this. And none of this happened. I mean, the fundamental Apple just fundamentally proves if you do great stuff, people will put up with a lot. Yeah. And the, the problem is that most companies get the part about making our customers put up with a lot they forget about the part of making great stuff. <laughs> you got to do the great stuff first. Yeah, yeah. Or people aren't going to put up with anything. I know. Yeah. So, uh, but, you, you know, I mean, if you think about, if I said to you, Leo, I want you to buy a phone, and this phone, rumor has it, if you hold it the wrong way, we'll drop the call. Uh, if you use it the way it, it's intended, you won't be able to go a full day um, without charging it. And it, it's using an exclusive carrier that just sucks. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're really in a desolate area like Palo Alto, you'll drop calls all the time. Um, <laughs> you know, so I said to you, Well, I wouldn't so, buy that phone. That yeah, sounds like a terrible phone. phone? No. Meanwhile, you know, people are lining up to buy that phone. I, I, I've bought four or five for my house. So. Yeah. No, uh, I, my kids have them. My wife has yeah. them. Yeah. What, I, mean, what? I learned a very interesting thing. I was on a panel the other day with a guy who runs social media for the NBA. And he told me that they have NBA droid apps, Android apps, and they have NBA um, iPhone apps. And they have installed more Android apps 
than Apple apps, okay? So Android apps are more popular than the iPhone apps. But as far as monetization, yeah. monetization of the iPhone version is 10 times better than the Android there's Apple something about people who buy Apple products, isn't it? Isn't that yeah, the case? Yeah, I mean, we just we we just love to stand in line and pay full retail. I mean, it's just, you know. <laughs> we got more money than cents. Some would talk say. About, talk about enchantment, jeez. Well, what, what's your take on social media? Well, uh, You've used Twitter quite effectively for all top, for instance. Yeah. Um, I I think social media or specifically Twitter. I think Twitter is just the greatest thing that ever happened to a marketing person. Oh my God. I mean, it's fast. It's free. It's ubiquitous. Um, if people don't like it, you get to tell them off and say, don't follow me. It's voluntary. I mean, you know, well, it cannot get any better than this. <laughs> I mean, it's true, isn't it? It is it's a perfect I mean, marketing tool. Uh, but I, I, you know, I have to admit that if, if five years ago and whenever Twitter started, if some said to me, you know, we're going to enable you to tell your followers with 140 character limit anything you want, like your cat rolled over <laughs> or the line at Starbucks is long or... Don't drink you know, blue bottle or you'll be right. hooked. <laughs> right. Or I'm in the line at customs at the Toronto airport exactly. and it's long. And like, I would have said, who gives... I mean, why do I care if Lonely Boy 15's dog rolled over? Why? Why do I care? Why do I care if Michael Arrington, you know, went into a bar? And yet, God, I mean, Twitter is just huge. I just love Twitter. You're right. I would have never predicted this either. Although, yeah. uh, those of us who are on early uh, on, and I, I know you're one of them, and I, I certainly am, knew there was something. I mean, there was a feeling that you just couldn't. You, it was addictive immediately. Yeah, yeah. It was, it, you know, it took me about two weeks. For the first two weeks, I thought this That's is right. the dumbest thing I've That's ever right. seen. Yeah. And what turned the light on for me was the ability to search. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not the ability to broadcast, but so I, I, I would... I don't mean to brag because this is not something you brag about, but I think I get more utility out of Twitter than anybody in the world. <laughs> How many followers uh, to uh, your... Uh your well, feed. I really have two accounts, and so one has about 40,000, the other one has about 290,000, so maybe 330,000. But, you know, Leo, I mean, I think you're one of the same people. You and I were never on the suggested. Never promoted. Episodes. Never yeah. promoted. So we yeah. are, you know, we earned, we earned That's right. our followers. It's no the mistake. Old the old-fashioned way. How many followers do you have? Uh, 220, 230,000, something like that. Close, yeah. not as many as you, but almost. Yeah, and so the beauty of that is that you know those people, those people really consciously signed up for us, right? Yes, they Whereas, chose us. Yeah, I mean, you know, the 2.5 million people who signed up for Ashton Kutcher and you know <laughs> Barack Obama and all those people, they just were clicking the accept button. They didn't even right. know, right? So, but I. I me and you and Scoble, we, we have the right to be morally offended <laughs> that we were never on that list. There's something that happens with uh, sites like this where they hit mainstream acceptance and then the geeks go, oh, well, I, I don't want to do anything with that anymore. Well, because that's not people, my attitude. No, you know this is the power, right? Is that this real is people it, read baby. it? Yeah. This is it. Yeah, this is hallelujah, man. How's All Top going? Well, All Top is doing okay. You know, we can always use more traffic. How but do you make point? money on All Top? We sell ads. I mean, theoretically, theoretically, Leo. Let's let's say we have a topic called ADHD. Right. All top, right? Or attention deficit disorder, right? right? And so, if you're at ADHD. All top, guess what? You are really there for a purpose. It's because I your see. family or your kid has ADHD, I right? See. So now, if you're selling Concerta. We have a site that's perfect for you because you know with total certainty that the people who are at ADHD.alltop are there because Brilliant. they have ADHD. Brilliant. And similarly, if you go to adoption.alltop, you know that people are interested in adoption there. Right. And, you know, right down the line, 850 times. So that's the theory. Um, the, the issue is, and I, I'll be the first one to admit, I don't know how to make it tip, is... We're at about 2 million page views a month right now. Yeah. It gets interesting at 10 million. I, I don't know how to get it from 2 to 10 million. And then, you know, 
if I get it to 10 million, I'll sell it to AOL too. And then, you know, <laughs> me and Mike Arrington will be sitting down and smoking cigars and we say, oh, poor Leo, he still has to do a show every day. <laughs> Those numbers are well known, Guy, in the, in the among entrepreneurs in the community that there's a certain, you have to have a certain number of hits or a certain number of uniques or... You have yeah. to have a certain number amount of revenue. Those those are well known numbers that you know. With this, I have to hit this goal to do it. Well, I don't know. I'm you know I'm kind of picking it out of the air. But t two million is obviously achievable for you know me and a, a small group of people. But ten I, makes I you special. Yeah, like so you know how many how many page views do you guys get or you know right. uniques do you get? I mean, there's a critical mass you have that's to right. hit, right? Yeah, that's right. And. Uh, we're it's, not there yet. It's certainly yet. north of two million. Yeah, uh, it doesn't have to be twenty-five million, but it, you know. Oh, but then you see somebody like Dig. Boy, you got to feel for uh, Kevin at Dig because twenty-seven million uniques at its peak. Yeah. And now we're seeing it trend down. Yeah. I really feel bad for him. I um, do too. And we now we should say, but both I don't know about you, but but Sarah and I love Kevin. Good friends. We've worked with him for years. Known him for uh -huh. years. Uh, and and uh, and watched with great interest, and have been rooting for Dig since day one. Yeah, it's is yeah. it over? I, uh, he like Yahoo and Apple, you know, are all going through or have Apple went through it and came out. But there, he, you're saying there's he, a second act. There could yes, be a second act. Yes. And do you like the new Dig where you know you watch what your I, I prefer it. I do too. In fact, yeah. I have a shirt that says the new Dig. It was my idea. So do I. <laughs> Because I wear it out sometimes. I People told Kevin like three years ago, I don't give a damn what those weenies who are yeah. voting up dig stories care about. I right. want to follow people just in the Twitter model. I want to follow Guy Kawasaki and Sarah Lane and find out what they care about. And that's what the new dig does. Yeah. And yet, I don't know why it's um, it's not... Well, the weird thing is that, you know, everyone complains that it's like, well, it used to be wisdom of the, the crowd as a whole. And, but it, but you can still, there's still a main dig page. You can I still mean, do it. It, it functions the way that, that, that people are used to. Uh, it's just that I think the traffic is diluted uh, so that the power users are upset about that. I, I mean, well, I don't know. Things, things change. Dig wasn't going to, it wasn't going to continue to succeed. They had to do this. <laughs> well, I think they had the to right do it. There's no question. Yeah. It, it, is there a time? I guess it, it makes sense, uh, guy. That there'd be time. There's timing. There's a there's a there's a perfect time for uh, everything has an arc, doesn't it? Right. That's why it's better to be lucky than smart. Yeah. Timing's everything, and you can't really predict it. No. I mean, it really. God, you know, my. I I remember, uh, vividly when Michael Moritz called me. Yeah, 15 years or so ago, and he asked me if I wanted to interview for the CEO position of a company he just funded. And guess what? You know, I looked at the website, and there wasn't much to it. My wife and I were living in San Francisco, and we had, you know, one son already. She was in beta with our second son. And so I look at this, and I say, so, you know, this site really doesn't do much, and I'd have to drive an hour each way. I'm not even interested in interviewing for the CEO position of this new company called Yahoo. Ah! <laughs> so, so you know, if I had said yes, I might have been Tim Kugel. <laughs> that wouldn't and, be good, actually. Right, and I would have like two or three billion dollars. <laughs> yeah, but you'd be and, sitting on the beach enjoying yeah, yourself. Yeah, I'd, I'd be sitting on the beach yeah. and I would be, you know, busting your chops. <laughs> have you seen the Facebook movie yet? No, I... Uh, Saw it last night. Yeah, and? I, f I feel like I I think th those of us uh, are the three of us are way too close to the story to yeah. appreciate it as a normal person. So yeah. I don't know if my opinion of it is what the I want to take my wife to it who knows nothing and see yeah. what she thinks. Because Aaron Sorkin they raved about it in the New Yorker. David Denby Gates said this is a brilliant movie, the best. He literally said the best script Aaron Sorkin's ever written, which is about as high praise as you can for anything. And yeah. I it bugged me a little bit. It was too, it was choppy. Um, it, the, it's exactly the, what I worry that I'll feel about it is like, it's like not enough time has passed or so. I mean, Facebook is still soon. growing. It's like too the soon. story is, but the story isn't over. There's, no, there's only half of a story to tell. I also well, feel like it's very unfair to Mark Zuckerberg. I mean, for instance, you know, I don't want to spoil anything. The, Go ahead. The, <laughs> the end of the, the, the last scene in the you movie. You spoiled is, the free for me. <laughs> 
Screw you, Gaga! Right? I was like, no. The end. Of, the the end of the movie is very point. First of all, it is not as negative about Mark as I thought. As everybody's thinking it is. Yeah. It is a very nuanced. Eisenberg does a very nuanced performance. It is not at all clear that he's a jerk or just nerdy and and antisocial and not uncomfortable with people. It's it doesn't seem like he's ba a bad person in this movie at all. Okay. It does it does seem like he's not. He doesn't understand people. Like okay. like almost. Not autistic, but almost autistic, where he just doesn't get it. He doesn't have any. He's like, well, why would this? Why would it bug you if I compare women to farm animals? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> and uh, so he he comes off as a as in and is insensitive and a little jerky, but not because he is a jerk, but because he's kind of like doesn't get it. So I don't think it's a a negative portrayal. Although everybody in the theater seemed to have a different opinion on this. I asked people, and and the people who I saw it with last night, it was a mashable screening, and. Uh, I asked Lisa Benton, and she said, oh, yeah, he comes off as a complete jerk. So maybe women will think that. <laughs> but the, it's very poignant. At the end, there's a very poignant scene, which is absolutely a lie, be, because Mark has had the same girlfriend since that since sophomore year. And the, in the, the whole movie, he has no girlfriend, and the whole implication is he did the whole thing just because he was lonely, and it's not true. Yeah. So the foundation so that, of the movie the, is false. That's the, I think that's what is the, the problem that you're having with the movie is that you already I know, know too, much. too much about yeah. the real people who are being I know too much. Yeah. Uh, portrayed so that, you know, it's like Mark Zuckerberg comes off as a real jerk by this actor who doesn't know Mark Zuckerberg. Like, who cares? Right. Well, you know, you know, I'm not sure I know, care how. You know, the, you know the movie about um, Apple? Triumph of the Nerds? Which one? Oh, so fire it? in the valley what what yeah, fire in the valley i've yeah. never Parts seen that Silicon movie. Valley. yeah you don't want to see it yeah i just you don't I, want to see it. nobody by the way adam uh d'angelo was there yeah uh i didn't ask him what he thought <laughs> he probably thought he was mad that he wasn't in the movie but uh nobody from facebook wants to see this movie and those who have are you know livid because it's not true it's a it's fictionalized well, compared to what? I mean, isn't well, every movie like that? Of course it is. That's how you make a movie, right? <laughs> right. You tell uh, a story. It's a story. And Aaron Sorkin doesn't say, I, oh, I have to be accurate. I'm not a historian. He's telling yeah. a story. David Fincher is telling a story. He's not a historian. So, I, you know, maybe I, I think you're right, Sarah. I just, I know the story. So it's like, um, it makes me antsy. It's, it, yeah, it's it's hard to watch it for entertainment but, value but, or to think but, it's you know, some The thing you should social. think about is... So, you know, we kind of know the story, so we know where the movie is right or wrong, right? Right. But on the other hand, we go and we, we see other movies about stories that we don't understand, and we think, oh, that's how it really is. And people in that business are saying, this is not how it really well, that's is. that's true. It's totally fictionalized, That's right? true. In fact, uh, th this is kind of a truism, but whenever the newspaper or television covers a field that you know a lot about, they get it wrong. Yeah. Which makes me think they're always getting it wrong. It's just that we notice it on the ones that we right. know we know about. Right, right. Well, think about how many Hollywood actors probably laugh at all the biopics. You oh, know yeah. that. That's true. You know, like oh, walk the line. Oh, Johnny. Oh, you know, it's that's like that's a good point. His, you know, his daughter is probably watching it, going, "That didn't that's happen." Not, that's, <laughs> that's, yes. that's never, I, I was, I was there. That's not you know, my that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I'd be very curious to see what. I don't want to pan the movie because I think I'm not the right guy to ask. Um, yeah. I, 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 it was very disjointed. They kept coming back and forth between the depositions and the actual really? events, and then back to the dep depositions are boring. Nobody wants to watch a deposition on film. All, and all I can say, Leo, is I love Hawaii Five-O. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's because you're from Hawaii. That's right. But but I have to tell you, funny moment. So I watched Hawaii Five-O last night, and there was a scene where you know the Korean guy says to the Oriental babe, you know, something like, "It's 110 degrees here." And I lived in Hawaii for 25 years. It never gets to 110 degrees. <laughs> so I'm like, what are they talking about? So geez, I can't do anything. But I love Hawaii. Hawaii Five-0 has the best B-roll in the entire industry right now. I really... Would have been a... Would have been a you know, 3 million views on YouTube for Hawaii. this. The Hawaii Five-0 Open. 3 million views on YouTube. For the Hawaii Five, that's how. Well, it's one of the best opening themes ever. It is, isn't it? It, it is. It's, everyone really knows is. it. It makes you want to go to Hawaii. Oh, Jack Lord. Jack Lord. Yeah. And oh, the beautiful babe on the beach. And <laughs> boy, Jack really got top bill in there, didn't he? <laughs> that's it. Nobody else is in this movie. Where's Airplanes Dan are in Where's this Dano? movie. Where's Dano? I want Dano. 
Guy Kawasaki. Oh, wait, you know, you are so much fun to talk to because you just say it like it is. You don't, you're not <laughs> diplomatic in the least. And I love that, that, that. I could take that as an insult. You know that. That's right? not an insult. That's high <laughs> praise. Nobody wants to interview somebody namby pamby who doesn't want to offend anybody. You're the best. So we thank you. Thank always, you. it's always a pleasure. No, Alltop.com. If you go to my.alltop.com slash Guy Kawasaki, you can see Guy's links. And of course, he is Guy Kawasaki on Twitter. Let's get that Twitter following account up. <laughs> only, uh, only 280,000. Come on. Yeah, I know. That's low. I know. What can I say? Guy, you're the greatest. Thanks Take so much care. for being here. Take care. Thanks, Guy. Bye -bye. Whenever there's Thanks. a big story with TechCrunch, we're calling Guy. <laughs> Guy will Guy will tell the truth. <laughs> See you later, Guy. <laughs> this portion of Net at Night brought to you by our good friends. Where else? Audible.com. We love Audible. Audible is a great place for audio books. You can get your free book right now by going to audible.com slash night, N-I-G-H-T. It is, you know, I wonder... If I should have asked him if any of Guy's books are, uh, he's written what like ten great books. I'm gonna. Start, uh, yeah. I'm gonna, I don't know. I'm gonna go. This is this is what you do. You go to audible.com and you can search for. I just love it. You can search for. Yes, the art of the start. Why? Why did I buy the Kindle version? I could be listening to the art of the start or reality check. Outsmarting, out managing, out marketing your competition, or how to drive your competition crazy. This is this is Guy Kawasaki at his best. You can listen to it right now. In fact, pick one of these and make it your free choice and and learn from. I I would say, depending on if you want to be a startup, Art of the Start is brilliant, and Reality well, Check is great. You know for, his his new book. He was just describing about uh, being an influencer, and knowing how to enchant others. Oh, I mean, you listen to, to him, and it's like if anybody can do it, he can. I can't wait to get that. Book. I was enchanted. You, I, did you see me not saying anything? I was just kind of listening to Guy. Wow, you guys, interesting. Well, that's because I didn't. Wow, let you he's in. really interesting. That's because I didn't give you a chance. <laughs> no, don't worry about I, it. I apologize. It was Sarah interesting. Lynn. No, no, she's gonna get me for this. You're gonna spike my blue bottle. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> Audible.com. <laughs> We will come out on an iPad. No, it's no. okay, Leo. You just no. go right ahead and talk the whole show. I no, you you know me. I I am uh, I'm not a wallflower. I thought oh, you would have jumped in. Doing, but but you know there there's a there's a there's a jumping in that's appropriate, and then there's a I want to be heard interrupting that's not. So I just I don't know. I I uh, I liked guys' energy. Sarah Lane, you are a class act. That's Thanks, all Leo. I can say. Audible.com slash night. Get one of Guy's books there. If you go there right now, you can sign up for uh, the gold account. You get one book a month, and uh, the first month is free, and the first book is free, and you can cancel any time, so it's, and it's yours to keep forever, and really a great way to find out if audio books are for you. They've got everything, not just business books. They've got bestsellers from the New York Times. They've got classics. I'm listening to uh, The Count of Monte Cristo right now. Oh, my God, it's so great. Mysteries, thrillers, science and technology, the best sci-fi. It's all there. Audible.com slash night. Give it a listen. I think you'll love it. Audible.com slash night. We thank Audible so much for the support of the Net at Night program. 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 <laughs> Sarah Lane, thank you for filling in for Amber MacArthur. Leo, anytime. As you know, I prefer to be up there, but um, thanks for letting me Skype in today. Plumber's on it's his way. It's like I, I feel like I'm. Uh, who's on his way? Plumber, isn't it the plumber you're waiting for? Well, it's not the plumber. It's like this maintenance person who runs our building. I'm not allowed. It's so the super. He's, at, he's, waiting, he's waiting for the super. It's like the super. MG's Schneider will be rough, there any minute so now. Be there. Do you know what the weirdest thing about my building is? What? Well, this is really off topic and not about the web at all. There but is no topic. I'm not allowed show. to let anybody in my apartment when I'm not there because I have cats. And they think my cats may attack them. <laughs> and it'll be a liability for my limb. I'm not kidding. What do, they think are you, do they think you're keeping cheetahs in there? I think it's. I think this rule was made probably because somebody's dog bit somebody at right. one point. Right. But now it applies to all animals. Maybe not a fish, but I've got two cats. They are not ferocious. Oh, are they not? But they do have claws. So here I am. Um, and the piranhas are scary. <laughs> well, the piranhas are. They're uh, they're gentle giants. They stand about them. <laughs> gentle they're, giants. <laughs> they're just for show, really. You know, in case somebody robs me. By the way, uh, while Guy was talking, um, it was confirmed that AOL did indeed buy Thing Labs, the owners of Brizzly.
Really? Now that's interesting yep. too. That's yes. very interesting. Confirmed wow. by TechCrunch, another company AOL bought. AOL can't stop buying things. That's AOL a huge mistake a, to buy Brizzly. Huge mistake. Yeah. You no, bought, what, what you, they just talk about timing. Well, the, but, <laughs> as a as a devout Bri a long time devout Brizzly user, I just I haven't used the site since uh, Twitter updated its site. There's no point. I can't. I I feel bad because everything about Brizzly I like. You know, I like the design. I like the way it works. I do too. I, I, I love the Brizzly. Theory, in theory, I like it a lot, and I couldn't keep myself using it. I just. Go back to the Twitter web experience. Um, that that's uh, well, especially like now that with a lot of other with, services yeah, as well. But. but with the new Twitter, the new Twitter does a lot of the things that Brizzly, you know, inline images and video. A lot of the things I liked about Brizzly, I don't need Brizzly anymore. No, now Brizzly and, does do and Facebook exactly and some other right. stuff, so maybe that's maybe uh, if you wanted a multi multi platform. Brizzly also, I think they um, they just started incorporating uh, Foursquare check-ins as well. Right. Um, right. So I mean, there's there's stuff that Twitter can uh, and they will, I'm sure, get on the bandwagon. But it's like it's you know it's a classic example of the bigger company watching all the littler companies do stuff and going, oh yeah, well we'll just incorporate that and we'll just incorporate that and then the other uh, services don't do as well. Brizzly was probably I'm guessing was a deal. You know that that that. Thing Labs probably was anxious to get out of it. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah Lane. Leo <laughs> <Hail> Laporte. <laughs> it's time for Tom Merritt and uh, TNT. We thank you for being here. Amber MacArthur, I think, will be back next week unless, she, unless she the will, whole and, customs um, thing was a, just an excuse. Yeah, no, she's so, she's so over us. She doesn't want it's just, to do it. It's just you and me and Guy Kawasaki from, from here on out on Tuesdays. No, I'm just kidding. That would Amber be great. Will be Are you kidding week. Forget yeah, Amber. No. Let's do that. I <laughs> no. That's, don't tell Amber that. Don't you know how that. her her she's got uh, web rage. She does. She's have web a real rage. real rager. Many, many people she think that she's soft spoken. Talk about somebody who can swear Woo! like a sailor when needed. You ever met Amber? Whoa, Boy, talk about baby. Huh? We've Gosh. added some things to Brizzly. Look at this four square. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. By the way, uh, Amber um confirmed Dana Brunetti um will be uh, your guest on that at night next oh, week. Oh, we're going to talk about that movie. I better keep my opinions to, mm, zipped up because yeah, Don't Dana ruin produced, anything else. Now Dana, I know in the last scene he gets a new girlfriend. I Jeez, didn't say that. Really no, 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 no. I didn't say what happened. I just said it was a poignant moment. All right. All right. Okay. Sarah Lane, thank you so much. We'll see you next time on Net at Night. <laughs>